Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. In this hour, I'm going to have a reading class. So in the reading classes, I choose an article um, from the Internet, and we read the article together so that I can help you understand it better. We work on vocabulary and phrases, and you get to practice reading out loud. Uh, we also usually have a chance to discuss the article. So if you have a reservation for this class, then you can go ahead and use that right now and join us here in the Google Hangouts. And if you do not have a reservation, but you are a Verbling.com member, then you can wait until you see the Join Class button and then you just click on the join class button it's a green button up above the video up here and then you will be able to join us here in the Google Hangouts we can have up to nine people in the Google Hangouts and that is our online classroom so welcome everybody who's joined so far Andrea how are you today? Hi Lisa, fine thank Hi. you and you? Good, I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. Oksana, how are you doing? Your microphone is muted. Oh, yes, I see. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. Thank Welcome. You. Thank and you. I want to welcome you, but I don't read, read Arabic, so... I am Abdelaziz. Abdelaziz. Hi there, Abdelaziz. How are you doing? I am fine. Okay. You? I'm doing pretty good. All right. Welcome to class. And Antonio, welcome. How are you doing? Hello, teacher. I am fine. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay, everybody. Um, so I put the article up, and it looks like some people have already gone there. I put the article, or the link, I should say, to the article over here in the Verbling chat. I can also put it in the Google chat. Sometimes the Verbling chat's not working very well. Um, so you can go to the Verbling chat window and click on that link. And what happens when you click on that link is a new window should open with the Google document where I just pasted the article uh, so that I can make it bigger so we can see it on the screen and read it together out loud. Um, I also always provide the link to the original article where I found it on the internet so you can go there and read it again if you would like to and if you like that type of article there might be others that you want to read on that particular website as well so it's a form of sharing these articles so we can use them for learning English. Okay, so we had some other people join us. Hi there, Jose. How are you today? Hi, hi. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. And Mohammed, how are you doing? I'm fine, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing good. And nice to Nihal. see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Welcome hi. to class. Hi, Nihan. And Vincenzo, you had a birthday Hello, recently. Hi there. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Fine, thanks. Did you nice have a birthday? You. Yes, yes. Good birthday. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Good. Good. Okay. And Wisla, how are you? Hello. Thank you. I'm well. How are you? Wonderful. <laughs> That's a fun little uh, rabbit you have there in your picture. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you. Okay. Okay, did everybody go to the article? I'm going to put it now up in the um, screen share so everybody can see it. Um, let's see, is the class full? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So, Natalia, yes, the class is full. Sometimes people have to leave and they uh, drop out, but I don't know. So I think there might be another class going at the same time. You could check in there, or with the reading class, you can also follow along, and you can listen to us uh, read, and then you'll be able to follow along. Okay, so 
Uh, today, I well, I first planned one article, but then I thought it was a little depressing, so <laughs> I tried. I wanted to find it, another article. Well, the one article I was going to read was about how employers in California um, don't pay their um, the immigrants who work for them, like a lot of Mexican immigrants. But it was kind of um, upsetting. So I went to a one that has a little bit more hope. It's a short article, so I think we will have time to read it, or go over some vocabulary, but also um, discuss it a little bit because I think it brings up some interesting um, points about uh, our modern day society, especially uh, women. I don't know. It's probably better if everybody mutes their microphone if I'm hearing some noises. Um, I got this article from Wired.com. So some of you are probably familiar with Wired.com. Um, it's an you know it's an online magazine and also a print magazine that talks a lot about technology, business, entertainment, things like that. So this is um, a one about a new documentary that is being featured at a film festival here in um, the United States which is called Sundance. It's a pretty uh, famous film festival and it's held every year in the state of Utah, Park City, Utah and it's held in the winter so it's probably usually pretty cold and pretty snowy there. I'm showing you this right here just so you can see that um, on the actual website where I um, got the article, there's a picture of the girl and also a YouTube video if somebody wants to watch this um, later and you wanna, you're interested in this documentary film, you can see a little bit of it on YouTube. So I'm just showing you that there. Like I said, the link is um, down here at the bottom of the document. Okay, so the title of the article is An Iranian Girl Battling to Be an Astronomer by Angela Watercutter, the author. Park City, Utah, Sebede, Reaching for the Stars, is an earnest and inspiring documentary about a teenage Iranian girl who dreams of being an astronomer. So we're just going to do a little bit at a time because, like I said, it's a sh little bit of a short article. So, Andrea, why don't you just start for us? This yeah. part right here. Okay. An uh, Iranian girl battling to be an astronomer by Angela Watercutter. Park City, Utah. Sepid, I don't know how to. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's Iranian. <laughs> Sepid. <laughs> Sepid. Yeah. Reaching for the Stars is an earnest and inspiring documentary about a teenage Iranian girl who dreams of being an astronomer. Okay, good. So a couple of things here, battling to be. So the word battle or to battle is a verb, means to fight. So mm -hmm. um, she's from Iran. Uh, in the United States we say Iran and Iran. So both of those you would know what we're talking about even though uh, we say it differently. Um, and so she lives in a, in a country that um, I guess doesn't allow girls and women to do um, just anything they want. So she's battling to be. So she's fighting to be. To battle is to fight. So that's kind of set you up to realize that's what this movie is about. Her struggles, her um, journey to become an astronomer. So an astronomer, just make sure everybody knows, is the word we use to describe somebody who studies the stars. It might be similar in your language or it might be completely different. But that's the person who studies the space and the stars and the universes beyond our Earth and planets and all those kinds of things. Okay. So like I said, it's in Park City, Utah. This is the name of the movie, Reaching for the Stars. It's an earnest. Earnest means truthful, like it's honest and inspiring. So th these two words are describing the documentary, so the way, uh, what it's like. It's an honest documentary, and it is inspiring. It makes you feel good. It makes you want to probably reach for your own dreams or something like that. You know, if something inspires you, it makes you feel good, and it usually makes you want to do something 
uh, to help yourself or to do something that you want to do. And she's a teenager, okay, and she dreams of, so that's what she wants. If you dream of being something, that's your um, wish. It's what you want to do when you uh, get older or sometime in your future. It's been getting a lot of attention since its recent debut at the ongoing Sundance Film Festival. But for anyone not fortunate enough or cold resilient enough to be in Park City, there's a speedy alternative, I iTunes. Okay, Amparo, you jumped in, so why don't we uh, go to you. Amparo? Hi, teacher. Hi. Um, um, right. I don't know if you're ready yet, but if you want, you can read that. It's been right getting a lot of attention since its recent debut, uh, debut at the ongoing Sundance Film Festival. But for anyone not fortunate enough or cold wrestling enough to be in Park City, there is a speedy alternative, iTunes. Mm -hmm. So getting a lot of attention, that means a lot of people are watching it, you know, they've seen the movie at the film festival, but also a lot of people are talking about it. So if something gets a lot of attention, it means a lot of people are discussing it, talking about it, wanting to know more about it, and so that's what's happening. Um, like I said, Sundance Film Festival, that's the name, the Sundance. So sometimes if you see movies um, like on uh, iTunes or if you rent a DVD or something, a lot of times on the package they'll put, you know, winner of the Sundance Film Festival Award for something. Anyways, uh, it's recent debut, so the debut is when it was shown for the first time, and it happened just maybe a couple days ago, so it's recent, so it's just just barely been shown, and so people are now talking uh, talking about it a lot. It's getting a lot of attention. But for anyone not fortunate enough, so if you are not lucky enough, so fortunate means lucky, if you, you are not able to be there, so you're not, you know, you're unfort it's unfortunate that you are not there, or if you're just <laughs> not, you don't like the cold, that's what this means, cold resilient. If you're resilient to cold, it means you can handle the cold, you like the cold. So it's kind of a joke because uh, Park City is a very, cold place right now in the winter it's a ski ski area and so if you don't if you're not there and you don't want to be there then there's an alternative and they described it as a speedy alternative so a quick alternative and that is to go watch the movie on iTunes it's the first time Apple has ever distributed a new film at Sundance to its millions of users in the US and Canada while the movie was still playing at the festival. Okay, Antonio. It's the first time Apple has ever distributed a new film at Sundance, its millions of users in the USA and Canada, while the movie was still playing at the festival. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first time ever, so a lot of times we uh, use that those three words together. So something happened for the first time ever. So this is the first time it's happened. Um, they distributed. To distribute means to put it out to the public. And this is a very unusual thing for them to do because usually the films, they go to these festivals and they um, get awards or they get feedback and then later people can start seeing it when it comes to like the movie theaters but in this case they're doing something unique or different or unusual and so they're letting it play on iTunes um, and they say it's, um, while so here's the key grammatical phrase while the movie was still playing at the festival so even if you couldn't be there you could still watch this particular movie so it makes you think they think it's an important movie. That's what I, I would think. It's unknown how long iTunes, which always offered some films during last year's Tribeca Film Festival, will offer the doc, but it's currently $7.99 to own and $4.99 to rent. Okay, Jose. 
okay it's unknown how long items which also which also offered some films during last year's Tribeca Film Festival will offer the dog but it's currently 70, no, $7.99 mm -hmm. to own and four ninety nine dollars to rent. Mm -hmm. So it's unknown. So if something is unknown, it means we just don't know how long something will happen. So in this case, we don't know. It is unknown how long that iTunes will make it available. Um, but they also offered some films during last year's Tribeca Film Festival. So if you're interested in films, this is another film festival in the United States. I think uh, that Tribeca is New York, I believe. And doc here is short for documentary uh, film. And so it's currently $7.99 to own, which is actually a pretty cheap price. A lot of times on iTunes, a movie can cost uh, $12.99, $14.99, something like that. Um, the $4.99 to rent is a little bit expensive because usually you can rent for $2.99 or $3.99. So to own it means that you can watch it as many times as you want on your computer or you know whatever device you're using. But to rent it means you get to, um, I think they give you 24 hours to watch it once you start watching it. Um, is it worth the money? In short, yes. Sepeda Hushyar was only 14 years old when director Barrett Matson found her at an astronomy festival in Iran and subsequently documented the girl and her quest to become an astronomer despite the opposition of her family for nearly five years. Okay, Nihan. Is it worth the money? In short, yes. Sepeda Hushyar was only 14 years old when director Berit Matson found her at an astronomy festival in Iran and subsequently documented the girl and her quest to become an astronomer despite the opposition of her family for nearly five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yeah, so is it worth the money? So that's a question when you always have to ask yourself when you're going to spend money, is it worth it? Should I spend the money? And the, and the answer is yes. In short, yes. <laughs> of course, they could have had a longer answer but um, or a reasoning why you should spend the money. And then it just goes on to tell a little bit about it. So that started when she was 14, and it's been going for five years, so she's almost 20. Um, she was found. This is the director. She's a, I think she's from Denmark. Da she's a Danish uh, director. And this word subsequently. So basically, the the action here is that the director found her at this festival, and then made the documentary. So subsequently means something that happened after the first thing that happened. So it happened in the past, but after the first thing you were talking about. So she met her, and then she started uh, making the documentary. And what she was documenting is her quest. So when you have a quest, it's like the journey you're on to achieve something. So she is on a journey to become an astronomer. And here's the, the thing that makes it an interesting documentary, probably, is that her family is not um, in favor. So I'm using different words to say the same thing. Her family is in opposition, so they are opposing her so despite so despite you use the word despite to mean like even though so even though her parents or her family members don't want her to become an astronomer she wants to do it anyways so despite their opposition she's gonna do it initially inspired by Iranian American space tourist Anush Ansari Hushyar continually finds new ways to pursue astronomy studies even when her uncle berates her for her aspirations and her mother says their family can't afford to send her to college. Oksana. Mm, uh, initially inspired by Iranian American space tourist Anushan Ansari, uh, Hushia. Um, continually finds new ways to pursue 
astronomy studies even uh, when her uncle berates her for her aspirations and her mother says the family can't afford to send her to college. Mm -hmm. Good. So initially means in the beginning. Uh, so in the beginning when she first started this she was inspired so she liked the idea this person who I'm not familiar with this person but apparently an Iranian American um, was famous for being a space tourist I actually don't even know what that means like <laughs> I'm not sure what she went on if she went on a, uh, this person went on a rocket or something um, out in space I would have to look that up and it's probably talked about in the movie um, anyways Husher so the girl she's continually finding new ways so continue means always she's always finding new ways to pursue to to go after or to continue her studies um, to pursue something means to go after it or to continue working on it so she's always pushing herself forward you know studying more and more astronomy even when her uncle berates her so that means like he puts her down he says negative things to her um, because of her aspirations her aspirations is her dreams her desires her goals the thing that she wants to achieve so he you can imagine you know if you have it in your mind a picture of a person with this young girl saying I want to do this and her uncle's just saying yeah that's that's not for girls you're never gonna make it he's berating her he's he's being negative saying negative things telling her she you know I don't know exactly what he's telling her but that's what it means to berate somebody put them down so he is putting her down not supporting her and her mother you know keeps saying that her family can't afford so they don't have the money to pay for her to go to college to send parents uh, send their kids to college that means they pay for them to go to college if you can't pay you can't go to college usually um, very early on I got a clue that she was struggling for something and that there was definitely a long way ahead of her Madsen said and I knew I would really love to take a part of that okay Vincenzo Your microphone, yeah. See, yeah, see. Yeah. Very early, and I got a clue that she was struggling for something, and that there was definite, definitely a long way ahead of her. Madison said, and I knew I would really love to take a part of that. Yes. Good. So, um, Andrea, let me explain pursue again a little better. So she okay. wants to <coughs> pursue astronomy study. She that wants to do it. She wants to continue to do something, um, to go after it. Um, to yeah, if you're going to, I could say you you all are pursuing your studies of English. That means you're actively participating in things that will help you yes. learn more. So you're pursuing yeah. your interest. I think it is it's the same as uh, persuade. I think. It is. I thought persuade yeah. means to persuade. Ah, uh, so like I When don't you know. try to convince yeah. somebody to do something. Persuade. Yeah, but you can. You can be persuasivo. Persuade is convincer a alguien. Yeah, convincer. But persuade yeah. is perseguir un fin. Perseguir. Yeah, yeah, perseguir. Yeah. It's a make something yes. with a lot of will, teacher. No. Exactly. Yes. yes. To do it yeah. with a lot of desire. To not. Desire. Um, yes. Yeah, with a lot without, of willpower. Mm -hmm. yeah, without uh, any <laughs> fear. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Well, so you might worry. be afraid, but you're going to go for it. Right. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. She wants to still go for it and still try it. And we use yes. it a lot yeah. when um, to Very pursue. Very determined. Determined. Yes. Determined. To be determined. Determined. Mm -hmm. determined. Yes. To be determined to get something, to accomplish something. Yes. Uh huh. We, we use it a lot when we say um, we are pursuing studies in something or um, we're pursuing our dreams, you know, we're going after yes. our dreams. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, so that's what she's doing, you know, so she's trying, even we can say against all odds is another phrase we use 
when you know there's it just doesn't seem possible yet we're going to do it anyways you know we're going to try yes to try yes. yeah so very early on so this is the director speaking now in this quotes the director said that um, she got a clue so it's like she saw this kid and she realized she was very determined like you said Vincenzo and so she realized when you get a clue about something it's like you understand something you realize something mm. and so what she realized what that is that this girl was that this girl was struggling for something so she's like in the title it, she's battling so she was yes. struggling it wasn't easy it wasn't like her parents said oh sure yes I'm an astronomer we would love that it would be the perfect thing for you very supportive very loving very nurturing yeah. it's like the opposite <laughs> you know yes. Uh, struggling, lots of fighting, struggling, yeah. fly, fighting, fighting, <laughs> fighting, sticking up for herself. You know, not being, yeah. not See. being um, put down or convinced that she should stop. Yes. So she's struggling, and so this is, um, and then so she she realized that, yeah. and she also saw that it would be um, a long way ahead of her. So it would be a long journey. You know, this if she really stuck with it, it was mm. going to be. A, a story basically of how this person got through all of this um, hardship or struggle we could say and this person this director she wanted to take a part of that or to be a part of that we could even say she wanted to experience that and of course document it so to document it with a movie with a film to share yeah, this yeah. girl's story Yes. Madsen also wanted to tell an uplifting story. There are many documentaries that deal with the difficult issues women often face in the Middle East, she noted, but those aren't the only stories. Okay. Bisla. Bisla. Madsen also wanted to tell an uplifting story. There are many documentaries that, that deal with the difficult issues women often face in the Middle East. She knows, but those aren't the only stories. Yes. So, an uplifting, if you want to tell an uplifting story, that's like a positive thing that, you know, like, it's not um, just a, a story of struggle, but one that gives you something to look forward to that makes you feel good when you watch it. So, an uplifting um, story makes you feel good because you know maybe the end is a good ending or you know some at least some good things come out of the hardship it's not just an ending that is depressing or frustrating mm. or you know bad <laughs> for mm. her <laughs> yeah and she says there are many documentaries that deal with so to deal with means they already talk about those uh, difficult issues. So she knows that you know lots of movies have already been telling a similar story that women have difficulty um, doing things. These are the um, issues that women face, so the ones they have to deal with um, living in the Middle East. Um, but she didn't want to tell those stories because those aren't the only stories. So there, she believes there are stories that are uplifting stories that are positive stories that um, give people hope for change and that type of thing probably through Hushyar and Iran where growing pockets of the country's huge youth population want to step outside the country's norms the director saw an opportunity to document a different kind of struggle okay I'm put on. Okay. Through Hussier and Iran, were growing pockets of the country's huge youth population went to step outside the country's norm. The director saw an opportunity to document a different kind of struggle. Mm -hmm. Filming, however, well, Madsen didn't yeah, know whether there. or not. Hold on. We're just doing one little bit at a time so everybody has more to read since it's okay. kind of short. Okay, so um, through so there's growing pockets. So a pocket you usually think of as the pockets in your pants, <laughs> you know, where you put your money or your your hands when you're cold or something like that. 
But if you say um, growing pockets of the country's huge youth population, so this means there's lots of areas. So more and more there are specific areas in the country of Iran where um, lots of young people are coming together and so they're forming like a mass of you know uh, several maybe hundreds maybe thousands I don't know and these young people they want to step outside the norms the country's norms they want to have a different way of living so you have the country's norms the traditions and if you step outside of them it means you do something different and usually that's not always acceptable or desired by some of the other people in the country but it is the youth of the country the young people so the director saw this as an opportunity to document a different kind of struggle so um, one that involves youth young people when she began filming however Madsen didn't know whether or not the story would end up being uplifting or become yet another reflection of the limitations experienced by girls like Hushar. So she didn't really know what she was getting herself into. <laughs> she had to just wait and see. Andrea, Andrea, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, when she began filming, however, Madsen didn't know whether or not the story would, be, would end up being um, uplifting up and yeah, uplifting or become yet another reflection of the limitation experienced by girls like Ushia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she didn't know what would happen. So to end up means like what would what is the final thing going to be? Like how is it going to end this story? What will be the result? Um, this whether or not we use that uh, grammatical structure a lot. If you don't know whether or not you don't know if it will be or if it won't be something in this case an uplifting story she didn't know how it would um, turn out we can say how the story would turn out or end up or what the result would be um, she didn't know if it would actually be uplifting or <clears throat> just be another one of those um, films just like the other ones that just have um, just show reflect means to show the limitations that are experienced by girls so she wasn't sure if it was going to be the same kind of story or if it would be a happy ending kind of story um, in addition to the lack of support from her family young women are discouraged from going out at night in Iran even if they just want to look at the stars Antonio in addition to the lack of support from her family, young women are discouraged from going out at night in a Iran, even if they just want to look at the stars. Mm -hmm. So in addition to, that's how you can start uh, sentences like that a lot. So it just you just want to give more information, you know, like not only do they have uh, this lack of support so lack of means no support a lack of something means you don't have it so not only do the girls um, <clears throat> lack support or don't have support from their families they also are discouraged from doing something so the phrase is to be discouraged from some whoops <laughs> wrong one um, to be discouraged from something and that is they can't even really go out at nighttime even if they just want to go look at the stars which is what an astronomer does they look at the stars um, there was always a chance that Hushar would give up or simply not get the opportunities she needed despite her efforts okay Jose There was always a chance that Hussier would get up or simply not get the opportunities she needed despite her efforts. Despite. Despite her efforts. Despite. Yeah. <laughs> despite her efforts. So, there was always a chance. I didn't say it. Yeah, I didn't hear it, sorry. <laughs> Maybe uh -huh. it went out. Um, that didn't work. Yeah. Uh, so all, she always, 
there was always a chance. So the director of the movie, we could say, she knew that anything could happen. There was always a possibility that, you know, she would just give up. To give up means to stop. She would just say, this is too hard. Nobody wants me to do this. I can't do it. You know, I give up. I don't want to try anymore. So that could have been a possibility. Or she simply, simply means she just wouldn't, you know, it's just a simple thing actually, just she wouldn't get what she needed in terms of opportunities, even though, so again the word despite, even though she was putting in a lot of effort. So she was doing everything she could do, but maybe it would be beyond her control to actually, you know, get the opportunities that would help her learn the things she wanted to learn. Today, Matson says, the strong-willed young woman she met six years ago is still as determined, um, should say, as ever, and is currently studying physics at a small university. Okay, Nihan? Today, Matson says, the strong-willed young woman she met six years ago is still as de de uh, determined as ever, and is currently studying physics at a small university. Mm -hmm. So strong-willed means she has a, a strong desire and her willpower is um, strong. Means you know she's not going to give up easily. If you're a strong-willed person, it means you're like stubborn. Uh, you want to keep doing what you want to do. And so she is still doing what she wants to do. She is as determined as ever. So you can use that structure as whatever as ever, but in this case, determined means she, that's what she wants to do. She didn't give up. She's still on her path to become an astronomer. So she's still um, working at it and studying at a university. I had no idea how Sepeda's life would develop, but I had a hunch that wouldn't be the story about suppression and victims, she said. So when we have the dot, 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 there's like other things have been said, but we, uh, the author just cuts them out and then probably um, would look better or sound better if it says, but I had a hunch that it wouldn't be the story. Okay. Oksana. Uh, I had no idea how Sepeda's life would develop, but I had a hunch that it wouldn't be the story about suppression and victims, mm -hmm. she said. Good. So she didn't really know. If you have no idea, you can say, I have no idea. It just means, like, I don't know. I don't know what the future will bring. So she didn't really know um, how her life would develop. What would happen? You know, this was five, six years ago where she started filming her, I guess. And so thing, a lot of things can happen, especially for a young teenage person. Um, but she says she had a hunch. So to have a hunch means that you just have like a gut feeling. You have an intuition. You just have this thing that you don't know. It's not like a real thought necessarily, but you're just like, you feel it. Kind of, we say it in your gut. We use the word your gut, which means like in your stomach area. And it's just like a thing that you believe. You don't know why. It's not necessarily based on um, hard information or data or something like that. It's just a hunch, a gut feeling or and intuition. She just believed or had a hunch that it wouldn't be the story about suppression. So suppression is when uh, like the government can suppress your freedom of speech or your parents can suppress you. They don't let you do things. It, she didn't think it would um, turn out that way or victims. So she didn't think that maybe uh, the young girl would fall victim to the negativity of her family. So she, it sounds like she had a hunch that it would be uh, uh, a hopeful story. Okay, last sentence. I think it's also very interesting to hear about meeting young people who dare to dream. Those stories exist too. Okay, Vincenzo. And hi, Shafar. Um. I think it's also very interesting to hear about meeting young people who dare to dream. Those stories exist too. Okay, good. So yes, yeah, so the, the director obviously she had it in her mind what she wanted to show and 
it sounds like maybe this is what it ended up being was a, a story about young people who dare to dream. So to dare to do something means you do it even though it might be dangerous, even though you might not succeed. So you take a risk. So if you yeah. dare, if you dare to do something, you take the risks of maybe failing, of not succeeding, of you know being um, punished even by your government or other mm -hmm. your parents, something like that. So those stories exist. That means they are they are there. They're out there to be told. Um, also, so she was very interested in that. Okay, like I said, it's a, a little bit short, so we actually have 20 minutes to talk about it. I think it come, um, brings up, when I read the article, it brings up a couple of things that I thought would be um, interesting to talk about. One is, um, does this only happen in Iran? Are there other countries? So you guys could speak from your experiences in your countries or if you know of other places where... Uh, young girls and young women are uh, still, you know, not being encouraged to do the things they want to do. Um, and also the role of young people in change. So those are kind of some things that I thought uh, people might, uh, we could talk about a little bit. So, uh, Vincenzo, since you just finished reading, what, what do you see um, young, kid, uh, young people, maybe girls especially, but just young people in general, doing in Italy because I know you've talked a lot about the uh, political problems, the economic problems and I'm wondering if um, some change is happening through the young people. Are young people bringing about changes in Italy? No, I don't think so. No, it's <laughs> no? Very, no, no, it's <laughs> very difficult. Yes, because we have a, a um, I'm gonna say a, Difficult, very very difficult problem in politics, and uh, it's about our uh, politics. Uh, for the young, I think it's the problem is uh, it's the work, it's to find a job, to find to the problem to find a job. There is a a, a lack of uh, uh, the a lot of the a lot of people that hasn't doesn't have uh, don't have uh, work. Uh, I think we have a percentage of fifteen percent, something or something like this, mm -hmm. uh, of of uh, uh, people that can't find work. And uh, no. So do we, they feel I, discouraged I, then? Are they like? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think. Because, uh, they feel discouraged. Yes, no, I don't. I don't hear uh, uh, about some stories uh, of people that uh, uh, dare to uh, change to go again. Uh, yeah, change something, changing uh -huh. things. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, go against the the government. You know, a kind of react reaction. Yes. Uh -huh. There are a few stories. We we don't have the same spirit of the the French the French people with the revolution, French revolution. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Perhaps uh, I think we are we we are a people that they have uh, have had a lot of domination in oh, okay. Spain, French, something like this. Mm -hmm. And so the spirit of the Italian is uh, in this way is very I can I say uh, it's not to react in uh, the direct perhaps so not uh, to, to a, a kind people. of the dis discomfort uh, okay. depression yes inside the I think the people they are they don't believe in, in uh, the possibility to change. Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes it's moving in the government, but I hope that it will change in, okay. in a certain way. It, but, but I don't, I don't, hear, I don't hear stories or no, of this kind. Yes. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay. Let are, me talk to yeah, um, yeah. Bislav. How about in your country? Uh, in my opinion, um, the the young people are always uh, the same in history, 
And uh, the most important in Poland, for example, where I live, is that mm -hmm. that uh, now they are uh, uh, there are freedom. They have a freedom, mm -hmm. and they can uh, do what they want. And uh, the possibility uh, to travel, the possibility to learn, mm -hmm. uh, the possibility to the other things. Yes. Uh, is to achieve and very, in my opinion, easy. Uh, and uh, if uh, someone want to develop or uh, improve their skills, mm -hmm. uh, the opportunities for that are very big. Mm -hmm. okay. And yes. I, I think nowadays um, the youth. Mm -hmm. And especially girls in Poland, obviously too. They 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 have the same uh, rules how uh, boys. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a long time ago that, and I can don't I can't no differences between uh, men and women in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's good. So you would say that. Young girls are supported to do whatever they want to do, just like the the boys would be. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Oksana. What about um, in your country? I agree with uh, Vincenzo because uh, a lot of today a lot of European countries are in economic crisis, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, European young people uh, don't have a chance to find a good job with, with a good salary. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my country, uh, uh, the government tried to support us. Uh, we have uh, a good opportunity to improve the quality of our life. We would, uh, uh, we, we can to uh, enter the university. And uh, we get, uh, we have um, the opportunity to find a good job. And um, in our country, I think that uh, the government try to support young people and to uh, get um, some opportunities to 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 maybe to support young people. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the the women or the young girls have the same level of support as the yes, boys or yes. the men? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, uh, women and men are equal in my country, and uh, I am uh, 23 years old, and my husband 23 years old, and we have uh, equal abilities. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you, Shafar. Yeah. What What country are you from? Uh, I am from uh, Indonesia, uh, the oh. United. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. So you joined us a little bit late, so I'm not sure if you understood mm -hmm. exactly what we uh, read about, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me get strength. Uh, are you talking about the I want girl to uh, get this uh, and get his uh, dream? Maybe, yes. Uh, I understand a little bit. Yeah. Yes. So after reading this article, I thought um, we could just share a little bit of what we think about in our country. So in Indonesia, would you say that the, the young girls are supported to do what they want to do as much as the young boys? Or is there a difference in how they are treated? Uh, I, I mean, uh, in, uh, in my country, it's not uh, big. Uh, learn uh, between uh, a young girl and a young man. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, they they have some uh, ability to uh, get their uh, dream or uh, their hope. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I mean, uh, did, uh, in my country, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the sort of the fittest is the more uh, important, you know, in uh, my country because uh, we have so many uh, people in uh, in this big uh, uh, big country. So yeah, uh, you have to uh, 
and defend your uh, all your ability to, uh, to to get to get the top of the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, when you decided to uh, get your dream, uh, don't don't always pay attention to your ability. Uh, I mean, you have to uh, pay attention to another chance because uh, uh, some um, people is uh, in my country believes uh, uh, there's no one thing you uh, you could uh, hold on to be a success. There there's uh, many things you have to uh, you have to get mm -hmm. to get your. Uh, I think it's the same uh, between. Uh, girl and man mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, okay uh, i remember when i school uh, uh i think uh a girl uh, if yeah. you if we focus on the girl i think a uh, girl is dominant uh, in my uh in my class and he get the he get <coughs> he get uh, i'm sorry uh, he mm, she get the uh uh, rank one in my class. Uh, oh. They get a mm -hmm. uh, high value in the class, and uh, the man is a uh, uh, still be <laughs> still behind them. I uh, him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, Jose. Did you want to talk before you go, or do you want to? You have to leave now. <laughs> um. Well. I know, maybe it's a couple of minutes. Well, okay, if you, about yeah, if you want to just tell us in, in your country what the situation is like for young women, maybe, and is it the same for young men? And uh, Well, we have um, maybe similar situation, but of mm -hmm. course there are, there are sometimes places and uh, Jobs where uh, young guys can mm -hmm. earn a little bit more than young girls. Yeah. Um, that kind of situations. But most of the things are, I think they are right. Mhm. Mm okay. So pretty, pretty fair. You would you say? Uh huh. We yeah. we and we also have right now a president. This is a female, mm -hmm. and that that would be a kind of a very good feeling for women, young girls, because they can think uh, I can do everything here in, in this country. Even I can I can reach uh, presidential elections and mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So they can pretty much um, do what they want to do if they. Like there's op there are opportunities for them to even reach high levels in government and business maybe. Uh -huh. In companies and so in companies, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sharing before you, you leave. Um, Amparo, what it, what about for you in Ecuador? What do you think is? Do you think there are any um, issues with young women not being supported and doing what they want or? I haven't heard any story about a, a, a woman or a girl that want to uh, follow a dream or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the cases have uh, that I heard it's from young boys, oh. uh, for example, that um, try to be uh, good in 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 a sport, or a man who wants to uh, who wanted to be. Uh, a spaceman, even when in your in my country there is not a, that kind of profession, but he follows he 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 his dream uh, that he wanted to be a uh, uh, a spaceman mm -hmm. when he was a uh, a boy, and mm -hmm. now he I think he is for the for the A maybe, and finally he 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 got the 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 profession and mm -hmm. in Russia, mm -hmm. and oh. yes. Hello. He followed his dream, mm -hmm. and he was the man that uh, the 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 president supported last year to have the the the, the first satellite from our country. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think that it's possible if you uh, really have a, a deep uh, dream and you are uh, want to 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 get it. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he showed that it's possible. It's the same like uh, our uh, man that he was um, um, a man who sells a uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. And then he become uh, he 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 went to the Olympic Games and he won oh. the medal. Oh wow! Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So yeah, the Olympics always have some interesting stories like that. Yeah. yeah. You know about people. Yeah. In fact, I met a guy uh, two years ago at a um, like a little workshop thing or something in Montana, which is two states over or one pass through Idaho and then you get to Montana from my state in Washington. Um, and um, his daughter and I met him, so we're friends on Facebook now. And so I see what he posts. And his daughter, who's only 15 years old, is going to be in the Olympics for skiing, some kind of like a freestyle skiing or something. So yeah. <laughs> the Olympics always have crazy stories. Yeah, but it, it, he, he, she had the support from him. Oh yeah, story. for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Andrea, what about in Spain? I think that young people here can do whatever they want, but currently the government doesn't give money to study. Oh, okay. Uh, if the situation was right, no, none of them would have problems to study what they want or to dream uh -huh. what, what they so want. So maybe I, like it's okay, but they're not really financially supported. So it's yeah. Different. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I have a friend of mine, she's a girl, and she works as a welder, uh -huh. and that is usually a man's job. Yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, that's similar here, too. Antonio, uh, what about, what do you think? I think here in my country, the equality between women and men is a fact, uh, and young people also. Uh, young women or young men, the problem was the could be uh, they can find a job. Uh, that's why they travel abroad to find a job. This is mm -hmm. the, the big problem nowadays. Right. But uh, for example, uh, 20, 13 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, women. Uh, don't have positions in, in important positions in, in jobs, but yeah. nowadays uh, there is no problem. You can find women and men in the high board of companies or banks or nowadays in Spain there is no problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good. And Nihan, they're the last one. What's it like in Turkey? <coughs> um, <laughs> what? What were you talking about? <laughs> Did you fall asleep? We are talking about uh, if women, young women, have a hard time being able to pursue their dreams in in each country. So it sounds like for most people, it, <clears throat> in most countries, um, women. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> can pursue their dreams. It may or may not be that easy, depending on the economics of the country. But, but in terms of you know, like Iran, it sounds like there's still like the family doesn't want her to um, do something that's not normal or traditional. We should say for a girl, you know. So what's it like for Actually, girls in Nihon? I mean, <laughs> in Turkey, <laughs> in Nihon land. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it depends on parents. Yeah, uh, true. If your parents support you, yeah. uh, it's quite possible to to be to become everything in Turkey. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, of course, it depends on on your pocket, on your sure. budget. But if what, uh, what you can afford. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, it's mm, quite differs uh, in my country. In some regions, uh, because of the economical and political and religious reasons, uh, women uh, women 
especially young girls uh, have lots of problems with their education. Mm. But the west side of Turkey, uh, mm -hmm. they were quite educated parents and mm -hmm. they support their child in every way, mm -hmm. like music, like like sport, like education, in every way. Yeah. But uh, it's not the same as at the uh, east part of mm. Turkey. I cannot say yes. We are a yeah. um, uh, <clears throat> we are a secularist country, and the woman can do everything uh, what what he, what she wants to do. No, mm -hmm. I cannot say this. The east part is a little bit different for yeah. education and for the other uh, opportunities. But okay. the west side. Um, because they they have one or two child mm -hmm. and they can support them easily like mm -hmm. uh, like the same as the west uh, western uh, countries sure. nothing different actually but mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, sometimes things doesn't go on, uh, that you have imagined because in the east side of the country the girls getting married really really in a young, young. age mm -hmm. yeah and lo lots of problems they don't want to teach them they don't want them to educate themselves even if they tr try hard they don't want to be a, s a successful woman because they mm. they think they are only a kind of a slaves in in the house yeah. and they have to be co covered mm. they have to be served their uh, husbands. Uh, yeah. but yes. So that's know. you're telling a story that sounds similar to maybe how women and young women, especially, are looked at still in Iran. So that's what makes this documentary, you know, new and interesting, and maybe the beginning but of more, not, more change. I don't know. Lisa. Yes. Uh, but Lisa, I can say it's quite different because. Yeah. In Turkey, we don't have to get permission to our um, to our guys, yeah. to men. Yeah, uh, yeah. In 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 law, uh, in court, they all same. They don't need to get a permission. Oh, okay. But you know, uh, the country is a different thing, but the parenthood is a different thing. If I your see. parents mm -hmm. are contemporary, uh, yeah. you can do everything. If yeah. not, you cannot. Even in the America, I guess, in a small town, maybe. Sure. They, yes. They can. Uh -huh. yeah. Your parents depend. Depend. Usually, it has to do with religion. So even in the United States, the more religious uh, a family is, the more structure they have, the more roles that each person in the family has, and to yeah. go outside of that role can be dangerous for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Okay, guys, we went a little bit over again, so uh, I'll have to end it now. Um, I have a break, and then I have two more classes, so if you're around and awake and you want to join. <laughs> um, if not, maybe I'll see some of you uh, uh, tomorrow, or I think I have Saturday, too. So. Yes. <laughs> okay, so thanks for coming, you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Some interesting... Um, points about uh, our modern day society, especially uh, women. I don't. It's probably better if everybody mutes their microphone. If I'm hearing some noises, um, I got this article from Wired.com. So some of you are probably familiar with Wired.com. Um, it's an you know it's a online magazine and also a print magazine that talks a lot about technology, business, entertainment, things like that. So this is um, a one about a new documentary that is being featured at a film festival here in um, the United States, which is called Sundance. It's a pretty uh, famous film festival. And it's held every year in the state of Utah, Park City, Utah. And it's held in the winter, so it's probably usually pretty cold and pretty snowy there. I'm showing you this right here just so you can see that um, on the actual website where I um, got the article, there's a picture of the girl, 
and also a YouTube video if somebody wants to watch this um, later and you want to you're interested in this documentary film you can see a little bit of it on YouTube so I'm just showing you that there like I said the link is um, down here at the bottom of the document okay so the title of the article is An Iranian Girl Battling to Be an Astronomer by Angela Watercutter, the author. Park City, Utah, Sebede, Reaching for the Stars, is an earnest and inspiring document. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. In this hour, I'm going to have a reading class. So in the reading classes, I choose an article um, from the internet, and we read the article together so that I can help you understand it better. We work on vocabulary and phrases, and you get to practice reading out loud. Uh, we also usually have a chance to discuss the article. So if you have a reservation for this class, then you can go ahead and use that right now and join us here in the Google Hangouts and if you do not have a reservation but you are a Verbling.com member then you can wait until you see the join class button and then you just click on the join class button it's a green button up above the video up here and then you will be able to join us here in the Google Hangouts we can have up to nine people in the Google Hangouts, and that is our online classroom. So welcome, everybody who's joined so far. Andrea, how are you today? Hi, Lisa. Fine, thank Hi. you. And you? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. Oksana, how are you doing? Your microphone is muted. Oh, yes, I see. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you again. Thank welcome. You. And I want to welcome you, but I don't read read Arabic, so... I am Abdelaziz. So, you had a birthday Hello, recently. Hi there, happy uh, birthday. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Fine, thanks. Did you nice have a birthday? You. Yes, yes, good birthday. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> good, good. Okay, and Wisla, how are you? Uh, hello, thank you. I'm well. How are you? Wonderful. <laughs> That's a fun little uh, rabbit you have there in your picture. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you. Okay. Okay, did everybody go to the article? I'm going to put it now up in the um, screen share. So everybody can see it. Um, let's see, is the class full? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So Natalia, yes, the class is full. Sometimes people have to leave and they uh, drop out, but I don't know. So I think there might be another class going at the same time. You could check in there or with the reading class you can also follow along and you can listen to us uh, read and then you'll be able to follow along. Okay, so uh, today I well, I first planned one article, but then I thought it was a little depressing, so <laughs> I, tried, I wanted what? to find it, another article. Well, the one article I was going to read was about how employers in California um, don't pay their um, the immigrants who work for them, like a lot of Mexican immigrants, but it was kind of... Um, upsetting so I went to a one that has a little bit more hope it's a short article so I think we will have time to read it or go over some vocabulary but also um, discuss it a little bit because I think it brings up some entry about a teenage Iranian girl who dreams of being an astronomer so we're just gonna do a little bit at a time because like I said it's a sh little bit of a short article so Andrea why don't you just start for us this yeah. part right here Okay, an uh, Iranian girl belling to be an astronomer by Angela Watercutter. Park City, Utah, Sepid, I don't know how to... Yeah, it, it's Iranian. <laughs> <laughs> Sepid? <laughs> Sepid? 
Yeah. Reaching for the Stars is an earnest and inspiring documentary about a teenage Iranian girl who dreams of being an astronomer. Okay, good. So a couple of things here. Battling to be. So the word battle or to battle is a verb. means to fight. So mm -hmm. um, she's from Iran. Uh, in the United States we say Iran and Iran. So both of those you would know what we're talking about even though uh, we say it differently. Um, and so she lives in a, in a country that um, I guess doesn't allow girls and women to do um, just anything they want. So she's battling to be. So she's fighting to be. To battle is to fight. So that's kind of set you up to realize that's what this movie is about. Her struggles, her um, journey to become an astronomer. So an astronomer, just make sure everybody knows, is the word we use to describe somebody who studies the stars. It might be similar in your language or it might be completely different. But that's the person who studies the space and the stars and the universes beyond our Earth and planets and all those kinds of things. Okay. So like I said, it's in Park City, Utah. This is the name. Aziz. Abdelaziz. Hi there, Abdelaziz. How are you doing? I am fine. Okay. You? I'm doing pretty good. All right. Welcome to class. And Antonio, welcome. How are you doing? Hello, teacher. I am fine. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Okay, everybody. Um, so I put the article up, and it looks like some people have already gone there. I put the article, or the link, I should say, to the article over here in the Verbling chat. I can also put it in the Google chat. Sometimes the Verbling chat's not working very well. Um, so you can go to the Verbling chat window and click on that link. And what happens when you click on that link is a new window should open with the Google document where I just pasted the article uh, so that I can make it bigger so we can see it on the screen and read it together out loud. Um, I also always provide the link to the original article where I found it on the internet so you can go there and read it again if you would like to and if you like that type of article there might be others that you want to read on that particular website as well so it's a form of sharing these articles so we can use them for learning English. Okay, so we had some other people join us. Hi there, Jose. How are you today? Hi, hi. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. And Mohammed, how are you doing? I'm fine, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing good. And nice Nika, to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Welcome hi. to class. Hi, Nihan. And Vincenzo.